tomorrow we'll be marking Sankran, the time of year. It's not specifically a Buddhist holiday, but some Buddhist features have been added onto it. According to the Indian astro astrological calendar, the year begins when the sun moves into Aries, and the way they calculate the houses and the With the sky's chart. It's on, it'll be on the 13th. There's nothing specifically Buddhist about that. What is Buddhist is that little ceremony they do where they dedicate merit to ancestors who passed away. Because that's one of the things you have to think about when you mark time. Think about the people who've died. Of course, you can't help but thinking, well, they died. You're going to die. Time slips away. Each time we have a new year, it means we're that much older. And you have to ask yourself, what do you get out of it? The body wears down. You don't function quite as well as you, as you used to before, as they say in Thailand. And I think it's uh, from a Buddhist passage, but I'm not really sure. Time consumes itself as it consumes other beings, all beings. In other words, where is last year? It's nowhere. You can't really locate it anywhere. And it's taken certain strengths out of your body. So what do you have? Time flows like water. It's like trying to catch a river in your hand. Most of it slips right through. No matter how much you cup the hand, and the water is going to slip through. All you've got are your actions, the things you've done, said, and thought. These are the things you gather out of the water as it passes. So you have to ask yourself, what are you gathering? Gathering good things or just gathering the scum and weeds out of the water? Think of time as presenting you with opportunities. You have choices. Each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out, you're making choices, many choices, some of which go under the radar, others of which you're more conscious of. Now you're making the best use of your time. These are the kinds of things you have to think about. Because as the Buddha said, even if you live a hundred years, it's a very short period of time. When it's gone, you, can't, you don't have a hundred years in your bag someplace. You don't have a hundred years stashed away. They've gone, gone, gone. So given that we have a short period of time, limited strength, limited time, what's the best use? The Buddha says it's training the mind, because everything you do and say and think comes out of the mind, and you don't want your mind to be run by impulses. You want it to think in terms of long term. This is the beginning of wisdom and discernment. When you ask that question, what would I do, it would lead to my long term welfare and happiness. It's wise because one, you realize it's going to depend on your actions, and two, you want long term. So you've got to learn how to train the mind not to go just for the short term. What an impulse seems like it'll be fun or interesting, or something that you just feel like you've got to do without really knowing why. You want some strength of mind so you can step back from those impulses. and understand where they're coming from. One of the reasons why we work with the breath, in addition to giving the mind a place to settle down, is a lot of impulses come because there's something strange has gotten into your breath energy. The part of the mind that pushes for greed, aversion, and delusion knows how to squeeze the breath and to make you feel like you've got to give in. So you've got to learn how to undo the squeeze. So work on breathing in a way that feels spacious, 
breathing in a way that feels soothing to the body, strengthening to the body, calming you when you're upset, relaxing you when you're, when you're tense, energizing you when you're tired. That gives you a source of strength right here in the present moment. It makes it easier to look at the long term. There are a lot of issues where we don't know what the long term results will be, but there are a lot where we do. That's one of the reasons why the Buddha gives the precepts is to remind us, you know, killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants. All of these are for long term harm. So you've got the basic principles down. Then you have to look more carefully what little things are not included in the precepts. And this is why we have to develop mindfulness and alertness so we can see what's going on. And to remember we've got to look for the long term. Whatever lessons we've learned from reliable people or we've learned from our own experience, we want to be able to bring that to bear. And your choices right now. Sometimes you hear the teaching that each moment is totally unique, and nothing you know from the past can help you. You have to just go by your instinct. Well, that's a recipe for impulse. It's not a recipe for wisdom. As the Buddha said, there are patterns. This is why I gave the Four Noble Truths. They're noble because they always apply. The nature of suffering is always the same. The cause of suffering is always the same. The path to the end of suffering is always the same. And what it means to put a cessation to suffering, that's always the same. These are truths that are timeless, that allow us to step back from the flow of time. And you see, what are you doing with it? What is the best thing to do with the flow of time? And so we train our minds, focusing on the breath, letting the breath be comfortable, trying to develop a sense of feeling at home here in the present moment, and not letting ourselves be pushed around by impulses that come in. John Cha has a nice image. You're sitting here in the one chair in your house. And don't let anybody else slip into the chair, because otherwise they'll start ordering you around. If you're in the chair, you're sitting down. Other people coming into the house, they have to stand. And you can tell them where to stand, and you can tell them where to go. So sitting here with a breath, fully occupying your body in the present moment, that's the one chair in the house. And don't let greed come in and take over the chair, or anger, or lust, or any desires that you know are unskillful. Because you want to be able to stay here with the chair, stay here stable, knowing that you have the skills to undercut any impulses that come into the mind. At least part of you knows it's going to cause trouble down the line. This way you get the best use of time. You would take these truths that are timeless, and you try to apply them to your life in a timeless way. In other words, it's not just while you're sitting and meditating, but as you go through the day. Where is there stress? Where is there suffering in the mind? And what are you doing? It's all too easy to blame people outside, but you've got to turn and look at yourself. What are you doing right now? And this is not to say that you're bad, simply that this is the way to solve the problem. If the problem were depending on getting other people to be a certain way, you'd really be bad off. Because other people have freedom of choice, too. They can do what they want.
and you spend your time straightening out the world. It's like that story they tell about the, the hungry ghost up in the rafters. The meditation cellar. A group of people come, they're spending the night at the monastery, they're lying in a row. And the hungry ghost is up in the rafters. He looks down, he sees that their heads are not even. So he goes down, he pulls them so their heads are even. Then he gets up in the rafters, he looks down, he says, oh no, their feet are not even. So he goes down and pulls them by the feet until the feet are all lined up. He gets up in the rafters, ow, oh, the heads are not lined up anymore. It's all night long. In other words, you can straighten out the world, and it never gets straightened out. And as in the story, the hungry ghost doesn't get any sleep, and the people trying to sleep don't get any sleep either. But if you learn how to straighten yourself out and realize that that's where the, the problem is, and that's also where the solution is, things are a lot easier for everybody. So train the mind. Use the breath as your ally in this. Because you get to see things in the long term. So with the passage of years, you realize that how many years it is doesn't really matter, because you've got a timeless goal and a timeless way of looking at things, of understanding what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done. This is how you see the long term, as you step out of time and depend on something timeless. That's what the Buddhist teachings have to offer.